Some of the harms that uh, social media addiction can cause, uh, well, they, they're classified into three areas. The neurological complications, the psychological issues, and their social problems. And we might find ourselves at any time uh, in one of these scenarios or in all of these three areas. So neurological, psychological, and social. I think ultimately all of these lead to social problems, just like any type of addiction like drugs, alcohol, um, even in some cases sexual addictions. Uh, and at the end result, the individual suffers. There's self-harm that occurs. And that self-harm might be deprivation in some sort of way. It might be annoyance and anxiety and paranoia. It may mean that you can't earn an income anymore because you're just engrossed in uh, the here and now, the virtual screen that seems so imminent and so much closer than the person that's in your actual household down the corridor, in the next room, or even in the same bed. And the harms are actually amplified because what occurs is that you lose your sense of self, you lose your sense of reality, and in fact you're so engrossed in the online medium that you forget about the here and now. And so your child might need to have a sandwich made for itself. It's not going to be able to do it. It needs to be fed. Uh, in one case in South Korea, a couple who had a newborn child were so addicted uh, to a game which was called Prius, raising an online child at an internet cafe that within three months the child died of dehydration. This was shown in a Sundance Festival film called Love Child. And the child uh, in real life, its name was Sarang, meaning love. And the online child was called Anima uh, in the game Prius that the couple were, make, were, were engaged in. So they'd leave the child in the morning because the online child, unlike the physical child that they had given birth to, didn't cry, didn't require its nappies changed. When it was tickled, it laughed and it slept when it was supposed to. So the anomaly here is that the parents became so engrossed in the perfection of the online child that they forgot about their own physical child, allowing it to starve to death, literally. And so when we have this inability to distinguish between the online and the physical space, we get very confused as human beings. And so someone may be calling out to you in the physical space, help me, I'm talking to you, why aren't you looking into my eyes? You know you're addicted. You know you've got to get off Facebook. But the person engaged and engrossed in social media addiction has absolutely no control and capacity to comprehend what's going on. So you're talking to me right now, for instance, and I may be conducting this kind of thing and saying, yeah, I'm listening to you, really. Are you hungry? Okay. Oh, ping, text, send. Oh, what did they say? And it becomes almost like a game. It's, it's, it's the gamification. M.G. Michael, my husband, calls it the gamification of everything. The human has actually become a commodity in all of these practices. So if I gamify applications on a handset, on a phone, on a smartphone, on a wearable gadget, on a quantified self device, and I can create some kind of stickiness driver, which means repeat visits, or I stay longer when I'm engrossed in this application or this activity, then what occurs is that, well, people are lost in their, their, their own world. And in fact, when I've pointed this out to many people in the past, journalists, uh, people who have been addicted, they just simply reply, well, the virtual life is much better than the real one. I'd rather live a virtual life. There are less problems. I'm in more control of it. I choose to answer who I want. I can be anyone I want on the internet. And so it's also led to what Sally Aplan calls a polysocial reality. It's having the ability to have more than one profile online and living through the lens of an inanimate character, an avatar that has different profiles, different complexes, different looks, different selfie shots, different uh, frenema about it, a different context.